as well. Okay, thank you very much for joining. I truly want to appreciate each one of you because uh, since we started in January, uh, even last year when we did the 30 days, many were enthusiastic in uh, the 30 days that we did and after uh, many have given up. That's the same thing as well for the word of God. Some would fall on the wayside. But uh, thank you all for being the kind of seed that fell on the good ground, that you have kept uh, the pace. Uh, you've been uh, persevering. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews, those who through faith and perseverance obtain the promise. Faith is not enough to obtain the promise. Faith with perseverance obtain the promise. For Abraham, after he has waited for a little while, he obtained the promise. So I thank you all, and I don't take any of you for granted. Thank you for the time that uh, you spend in prayer. Thank you for the time that you set aside to wait upon the Lord, to join us in prayer, to pray in your closet. And as in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus says, the God that sees you praying in the secret will reward you also openly. The God that sees you in the secret fasting will also reward you openly. Not everything in the kingdom is a gift. I say again. Not everything in the kingdom is a gift. There are things in the kingdom that are rewards. And if you pray, God will reward you. If you fast, God will reward you. Matthew chapter 6. If you give, God will reward you. Uh, the blood of Jesus has given us access to those promises. And we have a part to play to see the manifestation of those promises in our own life, in the church, and in our nation, in the mighty name of Jesus. So I truly commend all of you for being here, for the sacrifice that you do, and knowing that your sacrifice is not in vain. Your labor in the kingdom is not in vain, even as you are praying for your family, uh, for your children. I can guarantee you that your labor is not in vain. There is a vial in heaven where all your tears are kept in that vial. Uh, all your prayers are recorded in heaven. And there is a book of remembrance as well, according to Malachi chapter 3, that God would open that book of remembrance. He would again discriminate between those among his children, those who are serving him, obeying him, and those who are not doing so. So even among Christians, there are those that are serving him, and God is not unjust, according to Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10, to forget or to act in such a treacherous way that you will ignore your labor of love in that you've ministered to the saint and you continue to minister to the saints. So I say thank you again for being here today. We are going to see, uh, we are going to do the Holy Communion without uh, um, the waiting for anyone else because whatever time you put, people would always come late. So uh, if you wait for people, they will never be on time. They will keep on coming late. So we are going to start. Hopefully uh, we are going to have some time to pray but I would ask you some questions as usual because you are supposed to do the Holy Communion as often as you can in your own home as well. So you don't have to wait for us to do this um, on Sunday here. Uh, sorry, on uh, once a month when we are fasting. But learn to do the take the Holy Communion by putting yourself in remembrance of what Jesus did 2,000 years ago. Uh, so I would ask a question first of all to Sister Lydia. What are the scriptures that uh, we use for the Holy Communion? What are the scriptures, uh, the one that you can remember that we use for the Holy Communion? Sister Lydia, give me at least two. Sister Lydia. Sorry, sorry what was the question? What are the scriptures that we use for the Holy Communion? <laughs> can I have a look at my Bible? Okay, while you are looking at your Bible, Pastor Rosemary, can you give me at least two? Uh, Genesis 14, 18, where? Okay, okay. Genesis 14, 18, when Father Abraham uh, was met by Melchizedek and he brought, Melchizedek brought bread and wine and the Father Abraham gave him his uh, tithe. Okay, that's good. Do you have another scripture? I think in uh, First yeah. Corinthians, Okay, chapter 11. chapter 11. Okay, that is what we use often. Okay, that's very good. Uh, Sister Lydia, have you found? Let me remind you, it is in Exodus chapter. Oh, yeah, um, the, the Passover. 
Which chapter is it? It starts with one, it ends with two. That's <laughs> 12. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And then you have Matthew. Which 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 uh, scripture in Matthew? Sister Lydia. Which scripture in Matthew? I'm sorry, I didn't do my homework, Pastor Jerry. Okay, it starts with two, it ends with six. 26. Matthew 26, okay. Uh, Luke 22. And then uh, you, so these are, we, we would most likely take the, the, the account of um, Matthew and the account of Luke. The account of uh, Mark about the Holy Communion is uh, too short. There are many details are left out. The account of John as well in uh, John 12 and John 13, the washing of the feet. Uh, we read it, but we don't truly really, um, spend the time uh, because it is not as detailed as um, the account of um, Matthew and Luke. John would focus on chapter 13, the washing of the feet. He would not dwell along with, uh, with the Holy Communion because the other people already addressed that, but he would focus on the washing of the feet. So when we, uh, we do Holy Communion, uh, the Jews were doing that the whole night. The, the, the Passover night, basically, they will start from 6 a.m., so sorry, from 6 p.m. till midnight, the, the, the past is six hours of celebration. So they would read Exodus, of course. Uh, they will read also Psalm 118, and uh, that's why when you read the, the account of Matthew and Luke, the Bible said they sang hymns. They sang the hymns of the Messiah, 100, Psalm 118 and all the other Psalms. That's what the Jews will be doing. They will be feasting. They have the seven steps. Uh, they would basically do the whole thing, but we don't do that. Uh, we know it was just, these were just shadows, uh, the, the substances of Christ. So we remove the shadow. We just give the substance what was truly achieved in the mighty name of Jesus. So what I like to do at the cross of a nine, sometimes I touch on Exodus chapter 12 because there are many details but at least I would have a whole hour to expand on it. But when we do this uh, Wednesday thing, I always uh, dwell on uh, 1 Corinthians 11. So the reason why I wanted to mention the other scriptures, it is so that you may also know that it is not just 1 Corinthians 11. So in 1 Corinthians 11, Paul was not with Jesus when he was uh, physically on earth. So God had to give him that revelation uh, directly what happened at the passover and uh, what are the elements of the passover so that's why we see from the the angle of paul so that we can uh, have the understanding so be, i'm going to read first corinthians chapter 11 again uh from verse 23 <clears throat> to verse uh, 34 he says for i received from the lord that which i also deliver to you that the lord jesus on the same night in which he was uh, betrayed he took what he took bread so uh, have your bread, your cracker, whatever bread you are using, preferably the bread that has no leaven because uh, uh, Sister um, Michelle, what is the meaning of leaven in the bread? What is the significance? Of, what does it represent, leaven in the bread, leaven or yeast in the bread? Sister Michelle? Pastor, I don't know. You don't know, that's fine. Now, Agnes, what is the meaning of uh, yeast or leaven in the bread? Why is Paul telling us that Christ Jesus, our Passover, must not be eaten with uh, leaven? Now, Agnes. When we put the, uh, the yeast in the bread, you lift it up, pop off. Okay, so it uh, raises um, the, the dough. So, but what is the meaning of leaven? Because what the pagan are doing with the Easter uh, eggs, they would uh, hide eggs in the garden and they will be searching for that. For the, they will send the children to be searching eggs that are hidden in the garden and hidden in the house. The Jews also ended up doing playing that game. They would hide crumbs of bread during the Passover in the, in the house, in the kitchen, ask the children to be searching for, uh, sweep all the house to find crumbs of bread. So it, if it has become a game like the pagan uh, Easter, then we mystery the meaning of uh, leaven 
uh, in the bread. So there's a Bible study. We already covered it also in uh, the, uh, the leaven in the bread and the my weekly meal. We covered it to those that are doing the Bible class. So what is the meaning of leaven? Why do we take symbolically a bread without leaven or without yeast? Mamadode. Are you with us, Mama Dede? You can give an answer, even if it is not right, that's not the point. The point is we want all of us to remember those things. Mama Dede? Uh, I can't remember, but I love her. Is to remember the body of Christ. No, the, that's the bread, that's but the, the bread. leaven inside the bread, what is it? Okay, that's fine. Okay, Lina Jai, you that recorded all those Bible studies should be in your head. <laughs> <laughs> it's the leaven of sin. <laughs> wow, voila, 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 voila. It's the leaven of sin. Leaven represents, in this case, is sin. That's why they were playing that game. God said, get sin out of your house. When you eat the Passover, you, one thing that you need to do, you need to get sin out of the house, uh, your house, and your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost or the house of the Holy Ghost. So Christ Jesus, who is our Passover, Paul said to the Corinthians that were continuing to live in sin, that they do not understand that they are partaking of the Holy Communion, they are partaking actually judgment. Because they are not discerning the body. You should not be eaten with uh, uh, leaven. Leaven uh, means the, the spreading of a sin. So, so the fact that they put leaven or yeast in, uh, in the finger and it rises, like my Agnes was saying, it rises the dough, so the spreading of the sin. So a little leaven, a little sin would uh, corrupt the whole lump, would uh, uh, leaven the whole lump. So sin, when it enters into the camp, it spreads uh, like wire the fire. So we uh, don't have leaven in the, the bread. So that's one you need to understand. It. So don't just do the religious thing. That's why when you're examining yourself and I'm examining myself, I'm searching my heart. Like David says, search me, O Lord. If you find any wicked ways in me, uh, tell me those things so that I can remove it. That's, the, that's why people like Wigglesworth were taking Holy Communion every day. It was not out of a religious thing. He was doing that to examine himself every day because if you need to walk in sign and wonders, you need to move from sanctification to consecration. And from consecration, we want uh, God to basically the purging you, the purging of the old man, the purging of sin. That's what God does. And what they would do that during Passover, they would any uh, vessel of uh, any vessel of wood and clay, they would wash it with water and with uh, soap and uh, high soap. But any vessel of uh, cast iron uh, copper, they would take a blowtorch. And they will use fire to remove the grease and remove all the other the crumbs. It is with fire that they purify those vessels. So Christ Jesus, who is our Passover lamb, should not be eaten with leaven, the leaven of sin. And we talked about the other leaven that Jesus was mentioning about the leaven of malice. There's no malice in the church either. Malice is sin. The, uh, the, 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 the leaven of malice, the, the level of hypocrisy, there is no hypocrisy in the church either. These are the leavens that we need. So the leaven of sin, the leaven of malice, and the leaven of hypocrisy that needs to be taken out of the church in Matthew 26. So revisit that Bible study of um, the leaven in the bread. So that's why when Paul was preaching, truly, he was preaching from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. Because there were so many things to break down so that people can truly understand. The people who know the Lord of God, they will be strong and they will carry out mighty exploits in the name of Jesus. So the leaven of sin should not be among us. The leaven of hypocrisy should not be among us. What I say to you, uh, I must be able to repeat it. Uh, okay, let me rephrase it. You should not hear something about you that Brother Jerry said that Brother Jerry was not able to say to you face to face. So the same person I am with you face to face is the same person I am with you when you are not around. So the level of hypocrisy should not be in the church. The level of malice should not be. And many people keep malice. They keep malice. And malice even among the couples, many, many people are keeping malice. 
in the, in, in the couple. So you, you hold a grudge. That's also seen in the book of Leviticus. Uh, we don't hold grudge against the people. If you have a problem, speak directly to that person. And we are afraid of confronting people. We need to learn to confront people. Otherwise, we'll be living in malice. So we have grudges in us and we are plotting revenge. Christians don't do revenge. Vengeance belongs to God. We don't take things in our own, uh, our own hands. So if we are very careful to remove uh, grudges and uh, plotting revenges, then we will not be able to, pick, uh, to, to keep malice with one another. If there is a problem, you say that to me and uh, acknowledge. We also need to be quick to acknowledge when we are wrong. And he that doesn't acknowledge that he's wrong is also proudful, and God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. So we need to remove the leaven of, of malice in our midst in the name of Jesus. Verse 24, and he said, uh, when he had uh, given thanks, he broke the bread and said, take it, this is my blood, uh, which is broken uh, for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So that's why we are remembering here. Why was it, uh, um, why was there no uh, leaven in the bread? If we don't know those things, then we are doing just religion. And by grace of God, when we are going to continue on the altars, I would explain the loss of religion that uh, even uh, Father Jacob was doing. And he led to death of, uh, of his wife, um, Rachel. Because they were in religion. When they would go to church at Bethel, they would take all the idols of the family. They would bury it under the terebinth tree because they know that God doesn't like idolatry. So we are going to the house of the Lord in Bethel. They would hide it under the, the, the terebinth tree and they would come to church. Hallelujah. They would offer the sacrifice. And then the moment they come back, they pick up the, the, the idols again under the terebinth tree. When God revealed that to me, that's what I was doing to God. When I would do a fast, I would, God so showed me that I was leaving my bag, my, my backpack outside of the church. And I would enter the church. I would sing. I would do this. As soon as I come out of the church, I would pick it up. And say, he said to me, you are in religion, Jerry. You forsake sin only for the time of fasting. You forsake sin only for the time of that consecration. And um, or the, while you are waiting for that miracle, you know that, uh, that you need to live a holy life. Uh, so that the answer can come, it is pleasing to me. And the moment uh, you are holy, uh, you get your miracle, and then you go and pick up your, your sin again. And that's what they did in Genesis chapter 35. Jacob said to them, We are going to Bethel to build the altar there and then offer sacrifices. So we remove all the idols that are in your house. So they removed it, they gave it now to Jacob. And Jacob did what instead of burning those idols, he buried it under the terebinth tree. We are going to come back and pick it up the moment we have left the house of the Lord. We are in a religion. And uh, Rachel, who stole the household idol of uh, his fa father, died at, at the childbirth. Because Jacob pronounced the curse. Whosoever will be found with that idol will die. He did not know it was his own wife that took that idol. So let us not play a religion. Let everyone that names the name of the Lord Jesus do what? Depart. Not to bask in sin again, depart from iniquity in the name of Jesus. So we do this in remembrance. Of, uh, so in the same manner, uh, he also took the cup. And after uh, supper, the saying, this cup is the new covenant in my uh, blood. This do as often, you see, as often. So do it as often as in once that once a month is not often. Do it as often as you, um, as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you do what you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Now I'm not going to read the rest. So we are going to do again our drill, but there are some scripture that I need to address because whenever you pray, I do what I listen. I listen. And so that I can address uh, some things because from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. It allows me to see what is in your heart, what you are believing. Sometimes you, I know you know those scriptures up here, but I know you don't believe it in your heart because from what is coming out of your mouth, uh, what is coming out of your mouth, I know that you don't believe it here. You know it here because I've taught it again and again, but you don't believe it here. Now, 
I would ask, uh, um, I would read to you uh, uh, that scripture first of all. First Corinthians, sorry, uh, let me read first of all. Uh, Second Corinthians chapter five. Okay, let's take it just uh, from um, from uh, just Second Corinthians chapter five from twenty from seventeen to twenty two. We will read it from seventeen to twenty two. So, Sister um, Harriet, listen very carefully. And once I explain it, don't pray that way anymore in the mighty name of Jesus, because you will know who you are in the name. We are no longer sinners. That's why sin has become a choice for us. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We are no longer sinners. We talked about uh, the blood of Jesus who was shed for what, Sister uh, Lydia? Why was the blood of Jesus shed? It starts with well, R. For the removal of our sins. Remo it was removal. Re no, remission. Remission. Yeah, for the remission of our sins. And remission means the entire removal of that sinful nature. That this sofa is the sinful nature. Me sitting on that show, sofa means I'm sinning. It's the act of sinning. But the noun sin is the nature. What Jesus, and when I sit on this sofa, what was happening? Uh, I'm wearing a white uh, trouser so that my trouser would be uh, stained in uh, whatever paint the, is that, uh, that, uh, that significant fornication. I will be uh, in yellow. If it is a, a daughter, I'll be in red, whatever dye is on that thing. So I was covered with that uh, color of sin. Okay, uh, so that was, so I'm, I'm talking about Second Corinthians chapter uh, uh, 5, uh, that's what I'm going to read from 17 to uh, 20, 22, basically, 21. Okay. Uh, I've lost a train of my foot. Uh, Okay, so what did you, when they were sinning in the Old Testament, they had atonement. Atonement means cover, a covering. God was covering for the sin until he has dealt with that. Just like when your child comes back with a bad report and so on and so forth, uh, you don't have time to deal with that, right? Now you said, okay, we will deal with that later, Joshua. And you do other things, but you would address the issue later on. So God, what he did, he covered he, he would deal with that later when Christ Jesus will come. So what he did, he put a big sheet on uh, the sofa of the scene. He covered it. He washed us in the blood of uh, goats and bulls to make us as white as snow. Uh, he put the robe of righteousness on us, even in the Old Testament. But the old person was still there. This is the old man that was crucified with Christ. That in the fullness of the time when Christ Jesus came, he did not come to cover it again. He still did what the Old Testament did. Uh, washed out in his blood so that we become as white as snow. Uh, put the robe of righteousness on us. But he did what the law, the blood of bulls and gods could not do. What Paul was explaining in the book of Hebrews. In that it was weak. It could not remove that nature. So in Christ Jesus, the new covenant, there is the entire removal. So that's what we need to remember. We'll do this in remembrance. This is what has happened in me. The old man has been crucified with Christ. He has been buried with Christ. He took away this whole sofa. So I have basically nowhere to sit anymore. Even when I feel like sinning, sin becomes a choice. Your Christianity and my Christianity would have greater impact when we would take responsibility, when we would discover who we are, and we will stop believing the lie of the enemy. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So he says now, therefore, from now on, we regard uh, no one according to the flesh. It doesn't matter who you were. I'm reading from verse 16, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 from verse 16. So therefore, from now on, from this day forward that you hear this uh, uh, teaching, that you hear uh, my voice, 
we no longer, we, we regard no one according to the flesh anymore. It really does not matter who you were before. If you were a fornicator like Brother Jerry, you were a drunkard like Brother Jerry, you were a heavy smoker like Brother Jerry, you were a womanizer, you were a prostitute, you were a thief, you were whatever you were. We no longer regard you according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the uh, to the flesh so they knew Christ according to the flesh we don't we did not see him physically Peter saw him but Paul did not yet now we know him thus no longer we no longer know him according to the flesh now he's, he was crucified buried and he's now risen we know the resurrected Christ therefore if anyone is in Christ if you are truly born again not if you are in a religion if you are truly born again if I am really born again what what happened is a new creation is a new creation not just is a new or something new completely you are a new creation all the things are passed away and behold all things have become new now verse 18 so all things in you are new stop thinking of you as the old person the old person was crucified like paul explained before he says, now all things are of God and all things in me. There is no thing of the devil in me anymore. I need to believe it. In my spirit, that's what happens. My flesh has still some habits that I need to crucify with Christ Jesus. But in my spirit, that's who I am. In, that's why when we pray, it's my will be done on earth as it is in heaven or in the spirit realm. That's who I am now in the spirit realm. All things in me now are of God. So whatsoever now my heavenly father did not plant in me, I need to uproot it. In my flesh, I need to uproot it. In my soul, I need to uproot it. That's why I use the word of God to wash and renew my mind. I plead the blood of Jesus, as I've explained in the David said, your sin exposed and in the power of confession. The blood of Jesus had the power to cleanse my conscience for all the dead works. All things in me are now of God. All things are new. Who, uh, so now, verse 18, now. All things are of God, not of the devil in me, of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing the trespasses to them. So God is not imputing those trespasses again, again to you. He's no longer doing that. If someone is coming to remind you of your past, it is the devil. But if you continue to live in sin, that's not the devil reminding you. Yes, your conscience that is accusing you, your heart that is condemning you. It is the Holy Ghost that is convicting you of stopping the practice of sin. Because when it comes into a life of a person, it convicts of sin, of righteousness, and then of judgment. If you are still living in sin and you have no conviction to me that your conscience has been seared with hot iron, like when your nerve endings are burnt, you no longer feel anything. That's a dangerous place to be because you have grieved the Holy Spirit and have grieved the Holy Spirit that he has become quiet. And many, in many churches, the Holy Spirit has left already because as Genesis chapter 16 says, chapter 6 says, my spirit will not strive with you forever. The Holy Spirit will not strive with us forever. The day will come, Samson will shake himself. The Holy Spirit has already departed from him. And it is too late. The moment would come as well, uh, uh, Israel with the capital in Samaria, they would try to fight, but they were embracing the ways of the pagan, as we saw uh, in 2 Kings chapter 17. The enemy ate them already from inside, according to Hosea, and they were carried into captivity, the first ones in uh, uh, Assyria. So now we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled with God. Uh, for he has made him who knew no sin, Christ Jesus, of course, to be seen for us. Why? So that we might become the righteousness of God in him. I am no longer a sinner. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So sin has no more dominion over me. That is the power of the blood of Jesus. And if we do not understand, if we don't believe it. So when you pray, don't say, oh, Lord, we are sinners. You are not, sister. 
uh, Har uh, Harriet, you are not a sinner. You are born again. You are the righteousness of Christ, uh, of God in uh, Christ Jesus. All things in you are new and all things in you are of God. There is nothing of the devil in you. You are a saint. That's why when Paul is writing, he's saying he's writing to the saints. To the saints. You're not writing to sinners. You are a saint. You don't need the Catholic Church to canonize you. You are a saint. But we don't go about calling ourselves a, a saint, uh, Rosemary, Saint uh, Agnes. We don't call ourselves saints, but we know we are saints. To be saint, saint to, be, to be sanctified, set apart. God has set you apart. You are now his. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That's who you are. There is one song that says, I'm no longer a slave to fear. Once upon a time, we were a slave to fear. We were a slave to Satan. I am a child of God. You are now a child of God. All things in you are of God now. You need to believe what took place when you were born again. So when you pray, hallelujah, look at yourself in the mirror. I am the righteousness of God. It will give you boldness. We know those scriptures, remember them. I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. The life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. The old man was crucified with Christ. Whenever the enemy comes and uh, brings thoughts in my, in my head, even last week, the enemy came and brought, brought down thoughts in my head. <laughs> I said to the, the devil, this guy that you are talking about, he died a long time. He died for 14 years ago now. I said, devil, I, don't have, I, don't, I did not even pray when the devil came last week and was showing me things. I said, I don't have time for you, devil. You are a liar. That person that you are talking about, he no longer lives in you. He died. He was buried. Get behind me, Satan. But if you are living in sin, then your heart will be condemning you. Your conscience will be accusing you. And your prayer will be weak because of sin weakens the prayer. And that's why whenever they were sinning, they would take the blood, they would put on the altar, the horn, uh, the horn of the altar, because the horn talks about the power. Sin weakens the prayer. And God does not hear the prayer of sinners. So when we pray, don't be sin conscious. That's why when even God is teaching us how to pray, he said, this is how you pray. Our Father who art in heaven, our Lord be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And then only then forgive. But by the way, forgive us our, uh, our sin as we forgive those who also sin against us. It's no longer being sin conscious. Sin becomes an occasion, an event even. Not that we are practicing it because it is no longer part of us. We are no longer slave to sin, slave to fear. We are now slave, Paul says, because of the weakness of our mind, we are now slave of righteousness. Just like we gave our body to be a slave to sin, now we deliberately give our body to be slave to righteousness, to only practice righteousness. That's what he was trying to explain to the Corinthian church that was sinning, sinning, sinning. So you don't know who you are. You don't know what took place at your birth. So we are talking about remission of sin here not uh, a mere covering. So when they covered it, it was they were still sinners. That's why they were in the purgatory. Uh, so sorry, they were in the in um, paradise because they could not go to heaven. So when all of them died from uh, from uh, Cain, Abel that died first, they were all in paradise. And the thief on the cross, Jesus said to him, today you are going to be with me in paradise because they were still uh, sinners that were practicing righteousness. So when our Christ died, we could now make a remission of sin. So he went and took the key ring from Satan in Hades. He closed the compartment of saints. And when he ascended, when he came out, the Bible says those that I were dead, they came out with him. And he, they even visited the, the, the loved ones. And in the book of Acts chapter 1, uh, when he ascended, he led the captivity captive. So all of them ascended. They were the first fruit of the resurrection. So uh, Seth, Abraham, the thief on the cross, they all ascended with him to, to go down to heaven. Before that, they were in paradise. This is what has happened. You are a righteousness of God. If you 
remember anything from everything that I've said today, take home. You are no longer a sinner. You are a righteousness of God. And if you are still practicing sin, then question your own salvation. Paul says, examine yourself, whether you are still in the faith. What, maybe you've already backslidden. So if you've backslidden like the prodigal son, read the Bible, study, come home and repent. God have strayed from your house. I want to come home. That's what we call backslider. Because backslider, God will do what? He will blot out the name in his book of remember. That's what he said to Moses. That's what he said also uh, in Moses in the book of Exodus. That's what he said also to John in the book of Revelation. So from the first book, that were written by Moses to the last one that was written by, by the apostle. This is the same thing. Those who are sinning, practicing sin, God will blot out the names from the book of remembrance. So if you are still enjoying the sin, then you need to examine yourself whether you are still in the Christian faith or basically maybe you have already been disqualified. We are talking about the remission of sin, not the mere covering. We are remitting it forever, entire removal. And if now we fall into one sin or the other, then we confess our sin is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. But the sins that are listed in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, chapter 6, verse 9 to 11, the Paul says they should not even be mentioned among believers. There are some things that should not even be mentioned among believers. So we are talking about the remission of sin. So you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. All the things are passed away. Behold, all the things are new. You are a new creation. And live like it. Believe like it. And you would have a, a victor mentality. You are a hero. The first victory that you have, it is over sin. First John chapter 3, verse 8. Who he who sins belongs to the devil. He will continue to practice. If you are continuing to practice in sin, John says, you belong to the devil. He who sins or he who continues to practice sin, he belongs to the devil. Make up your mind, whose servant are you? To whom do you belong? Either to the devil or to God. He who continues to sin, he who practices sin, belongs to the devil. John is the apostle of love, but he says to us, if God says to us, if you love me, you will do my command. If you continue to sin, you belong deliberately to sin, you belong to the devil. And for this purpose, the Son of God, Christ Jesus, was made manifest to destroy the works of the devil. I was working with uh, one healing the ministry, had, trying to assist them, help, help them. They did not want uh, anything about holiness. And whenever they would quote that scripture, they would always quote the part B. For this purpose, the Son of God was made manifest to destroy the works of the devil. Let's read the whole verse 8. Let's read it. He says what? Well, he who sins or he who practices sin, continues in sin. He is of the devil. He belongs to the devil. For the, uh, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose now, the Son of God was manifested so that he might destroy the works of the devil. So who, verse 9, whoever has been born of God does not continue in sin. If you've truly been born again, you no longer want to continue in sin. For he who, uh, for uh, why? For his seed, the seed of God, of his word now, even the seed of the Holy Ghost, remains in him when you are born again. And he cannot continue in sin because he has been born of God. You are now a new creation. All things are passed away and all things in you are of God. So when Paul is asking us to examine ourselves, when we are partaking of the, 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 the blood, that's what he's talking about. And that's why people like Wiggers who were taking the Holy Communion every day. It was to help them to examine themselves. Am I living in hypocrisy? Am I living uh, holding grudges against people? Am I holding uh, um, malice? Am I living in open sin, the sin leading to death? Am I uh, an angry person and I'm not allowed, I'm, I, I even uh, I'm carrying that anger for many days. When the sun goes down, I refuse to let go of my anger. Examine yourself. So that's what uh, weakens our prayer. If we do it the right way, our prayers are going to be powerful prayers in the name of Jesus. There are some people, when I talk to them, after I finish talking to them, they always criticize everybody. 
if that is uh, uh, those kind of people, I don't call them often. Because when they've criticized everybody, critic, everybody's bad, but instead of taking the good inventory of the things that are good, and those people have not done to them even half of what they have, they have done to me. But they keep on criticizing for one hour, two hours. So next time, because it would affect me as well. So next time I'm in control of my phone call. So I call them and I will not spend more than 15 minutes. The moment they start to talk about, the, about this person, I will just... Uh, hang up in the name of just say, okay, aha, like I was explaining to Pastor Rosemary, uh, I would just say to that person, oh, I have a meeting. Even if I did not have a meeting, I say to them, I have a meeting. Am I lying? No, I'm not lying. When I say to them, I have a meeting, then I need to go and I will hang up and I will say, God, I cannot lie. I said, I have a meeting. So let us have a meeting together. So I would open my Bible. I would read and I would pray and I would do that for one hour and I would close God. I kept my word. I did not lie to, to him. I had a meeting. I've scheduled my own meeting now with you. So well, I'm now in control of every con conversation because I don't want rubbish to be dumped into my heart. Guard your heart with all diligence because out of it would flow the issues or the boundaries, the limitation of life. That the fig tree that was not bearing anything for three years, the master came and found nothing. And they said, cut down. And then they say, okay, let's dig around. They say, load the weight. Let it, it is expensive to come from by but let it dig around and fertilize it. Now, what kind of fertilizer are you allowing people to dump in your heart? And in that way, in that, King James says, let it let us dung it. So are you allowing people to come and lay the human waste in your heart, the rubbish in your heart? What kind of food would come out of it? It is not proper for consumption. Are you allowing people to come and dung it with uh, fertilizing with cow dung, uh, the ways of the idols of this land? Or are you allowing it to be fertilized with the word of God? When you are wanting to go higher with Christ, what are some friends you need to cut off in your life? Seriously. Because where you are going, they cannot take you there. They are always going to bring you back. Negative, negative criticizing everybody, insulting everybody. They are revilers, like Jude said. And by so doing, they're even reviling the Holy Ghost without knowing it. So you would have to examine your own self, whether you are still in the faith and in your walk with Christ, what kind of fertilizer are you allowing to be placed in your heart so that you, because the soil is the heart and God is planting the seed in your heart. Christianity is an individual journey. Though we collectively can come and support you and help you, but when push comes to shove, you will stand on your own. You will only have few, find a few people that will stand with you, few people that would encourage you. If you find at least two people that would encourage you in this Christian journey, embrace them and have them close to you in the name of Jesus. But it is very difficult sometimes to find people that will stand with you. So you need to make up your mind to choose your friend. The righteous chooses his friend carefully. Friends will not leave you where they found you. They will either bring you down or bring you up. And you need to choose your friend carefully in the name of Jesus. So examine yourself. Today, as we are partaking of the Holy Communion, we examine ourselves whether we are still in the faith or not. Because as we are trying to be, destroy the altars that are in our family, if we ourselves are living in sin, you will be like uh, the, in Acts chapter 19, the sons of Sceva. The Bible says it calls them the sons of Belial. The sons of Belial, uh, they are those that are living in homosexuality, those that are according to the book of Judges, and those that are living in all, all the other sexual immorality. And those that are doing the financial manipulation, also in the book of Samuel, the, some of the, sol the soldiers of Samuel, uh, sorry, of David, they call them the sons of Belial. So they were living in sin. And they wanted to say, in the name of Jesus, we are Jew, you come out. The same Jesus that the, uh, Paul preaches. The devil scratched his head. He said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. Who are you? And they beat them up. They are naked. We are going to be defeated. If we, know, we do not repair the altar, we are the altar. We are the sacrifice that is laid up on that altar. A living sacrifice. How holy sacrifice.
if we want the power, there, there is no hidden truth that this is only for some pastor. It is for everybody. It is available for everybody, for everybody. And if you want victory in your family, victory in your business, victory, people will say, oh, I'm just looking for scriptures about prosperity. You are going about it the wrong way. Father Abraham did not pray for prosperity, but because he was just serving the Lord, God gave him the prosperity because it is part of the sacrifice. His hand were pierced so that whatever you lay your hands upon to do shall prosper. They put the crown of thorns around his head so that uh, the curse that was in the garden of Eden that you would uh, eat by the sweat of your brow. And also when you saw the when you saw the land, it will bring you thorns and thistles. It was broken through Christ Jesus when they put the crown of thorns around his, uh, his, um, his head. He gave you also soundness of mind so that he has not given you any spirit of fear or timidity or torment, but the power, love, and sound mind. So when Father Abraham was having a relationship with God, he was not looking for money. That's the wrong way to, to go about it. Some people say, I don't want to hear about holiness. I don't want to hear about getting close to God. Just teach me how to get the papers. Just teach me how to get marriage. Just teach me scriptures of how to, to succeed in business. You are going about it the wrong way. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all the other things they will be added on to you. Abraham wanted to be a friend of God. And when you are a friend of the, the queen, uh, queen Elizabeth, she will not allow you to live in a shack house. She will make sure that you are in good co uh, conditions. She at the funeral of uh, Prince, uh, our Prince uh, Philip, the lady that drove in the Rolls Royce with, um, with, uh, <laughs> with, uh, with Her Majesty the Queen, She's not a part of the, the royal family. She is one of the, the, the lady that serves the queen, attends to her. Not, not even her son was uh, uh, in that Rolls Royce uh, with her, but that servant, because she has become a friend of the queen. She has been able to, by serving her, she has been able to stand with her, to comfort her in the good times, in the bad times. She used to be the, the nanny of uh, Prince uh, Charles. So now when she has lost a uh, 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 husband, the only person she could think of that could stand by her was that servant. That's what God was saying to us in the book of, uh, of uh, Galatians for Paul, that a, a servant, if he's even uh, wiser than a son, he will be even actually closer than a son because he would win the heart of his uh, master or her, ma or her mistress. But even the good time, the, the, the master would rather talk to the servant than talk to the, the son or the daughter. Friends, God is looking for friends. And if you are my friend, if you do whatever I command you, this is the standard of God. So instead of praying, God, I want to be your friend, God say, okay, the answer is already in this book, John chapter 15. You want to be my friend? Do whatever I command you. That's why Abraham was his friend. Once he said, leave, he left. Do this, he did this. Offer your son. He offered it. God says, now I know. Now, before it was just empty talks. Now I know. God, I want to be a man after your own heart like David. It's just simple. He said, I found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. Why was David a man after his own heart? Because he's going to do all my will. Not because he was a singing. So you can sing all you want. That's not uh, being a man after God's own heart. And people, it is in black and white in our Bible. In the book of Acts, Paul said it in the book of Samuel as well. The reason why David was a man after God's own heart, it was because he was going to do all the will of God. So God is not keeping us in the dark. We need to try to figure out how can I become a son, a, a friend of God? How can I be, uh, I call it a man after God's own heart? He said it in black and white. So just go do it. Don't, you don't need to sing, though we ought to sing. You don't need to give your money, though we ought to, 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 to bless with our finances. But truly, it's about doing all that God has commanded us. If you want to be his friend, it's about doing all these way. If you want to be men and women after his own heart. 
So if you go after God, that's why he's saying to us, my son, give me your heart. The reason why uh, Joseph did not sin, it was not because of, uh, there were not even uh, the law of Moses yet. The laws of Moses were not written yet. The reason why he did not sin against God was because he loved God. He said, it is a great abomination against my God to do that. And when you, start, you and I start hating sin the way God hates it, like it is said of Jesus, he hated lawlessness. Many people uh, love righteousness like Jesus, but, but they don't hate lawlessness. You need to hate lawlessness like Phineas. Phineas, when he saw lawlessness in the camp, he took a javelin and went and pierced through those people. And God said, forever the priest would belong to the sons of Aaron because of what Phineas has done. And Jesus' Bible says he hated lawlessness. And he loved righteousness. Therefore, or that is the reason why God has anointed him with the oil of gladness more than all his uh, companions. If the word of God means the little in your life, the power of God also will be little in your life in the name of Jesus. And there is no shortcut. Malachi, Malachi uh, uh, Micah, Micah says in chapter 3 that uh, the reason why I'm full of, uh, truly I'm full of power and of might. Why? to declare to Israel his transgression and to Jacob his sin. So that is the word the Holy Spirit comes in there. He does, he convicts of sin uh, so that people can repent of righteousness, so that people can live right. And if they are rejected, they have judgment. Because he wants us to have victory. My, my only, con I, it breaks my heart when I see people going in a circle for the whole life. What uh, ended up being a 40 years a journey was supposed to be only 11 months and eight days because God used 11 months and eight days to, 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 to renew the mind, to teach them the word of God. Immediately after he has renewed the mind, he said, now go and conquer the land. It was never the plan of God. God wants to give you an inheritance provided your mind is renewed and that you will not forget him. That's why he wants to teach you, teach you, teach you, teach you. So that when you get wealth, you will not forget. You shall remember the Lord your God because it is he that gives you power to get wealth so that you may establish his covenant because he made a covenant with you. So let me tell you the terms of my covenant so that you, you when you get it, when I give it to you, you will continue to serve me in the name of Jesus. They turn it into 40 years. And if you and I get our stuff together, uh, I guarantee you, based on the word of God, and God is not a man that he should lie, I guarantee you, based on the word of God, everything that God spoke about you, about your son, he's going to do it in the name of Jesus. I showed, I told, told you the testimony uh, during the healing crusade, uh, sister um, uh, Tina McPhee, a uh, grandson, uh, who the Andrew was mute. When I went to pray, when I went to preach in Motherwell uh, last year, no, 2019 or around November before I went to, 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 to Tanzania. No, yeah, 2019, I prayed for her, I prayed for her daughter, and she said her grandson was uh, uh, mute, but he was not, so I gave her a handkerchief. And then uh, I let it, uh, I forgot about it, so I went to Tanzania, came back, she called me like the week uh, uh, early on Monday, not this Monday, but the other Monday, when we were having a prayer meeting with Lynn and Jonathan, Lynn and Calvin, I said I will call her the next day. And she told me that she has been bereaved and so on and so forth. Maybe God has forsaken her and so on and so forth. But she always saw a vision of Andrew, a grandson, preaching the gospel. I said, God does not lie. Andrew is going to preach the gospel. So how he's going to preach the gospel? If he's mute, he cannot speak. I said, don't worry. So I prayed. I commanded the spirit of muteness to leave Andrew in the name of Jesus. And then on the 15th, she sent me a text message, praise the Lord, because she always prays with the children. And she came and said uh, to, the, to the children, okay, come, even when they like it or they don't like it, come and I will read the Bible to you and I will pray for you. So when she came now, she said, Ali, come, uh, le, le, come, let us pray. Uh, the little Andrew said, go away. And then she said, go away. Said, this is Andrew that is speaking, go away. And then she was shouting and screaming. And she started to text me, praise the Lord, thank you, God gave me a sign as you said. And so you discovered that the Lord also will be going, to, he's going to watch over the word that comes out of your mouth and perform it in the name of Jesus. 
There is no mystery. I don't hide anything from anyone. And Paul said to the Ephesian church, whatever was needful for your faith, I did not hide it. I told you everything. So it is available to everyone. God doesn't have a favorite. He doesn't. And he wants to do the same thing for you, for your own family, in the mighty name of Jesus. The mute will speak. The blind will see. The dead will be raised. God will do the same thing. He's no respect of person, provided you embrace the life of those people, provided you come to him with a genuine heart. God is not a man that he should lie. He's not a man that he should lie. Ruth was not looking for marriage. There was no hope of any marriage at all. She just loved the Lord. She said to Naomi, your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. Don't entreat me to go back to my, my pagan gods. Whether marriage or no marriage, I'm going to serve this God. God said, this kind of woman, I need to honor her faith. Even if she didn't pray for, for that, God provided Boaz for her in the name of Jesus. Solomon did not pray for money. He was concerned about the people of God. He was not supposed to lead the people of God. So he said, God, I need you to help me, to give me wisdom. I'm a young man. I need wisdom. God said, ah, wisdom for what? Because I want to lead your people. I don't want to make mistakes. He said, now you are talking. You are concerned about the things that I'm concerned about. But let me tell you, you are naive. Wisdom is good, but you will need money. You will need this. You will need your enemies to be at peace with you. And I will give you all the other things that you have not asked for. We are going about the things of the kingdom the wrong way. Go after God's heart. Become, become his friend. Become a man after his own heart. And then you will see. Practice righteousness and all the other things. Marriage, papers, uh, status, children, healing the Lord will add it unto you in the name of Jesus. Now, let us partake of uh, that uh, bread. Now, if you have your bread, I am not eating the bread here today uh, because uh, I am on the mountain in the name of Jesus. So I'm only going to have uh, the wine. I'm not having the bread. But if you have your bread, uh, take it in the name of Jesus. So he says, uh, he took the bread. Jesus took the bread, so take your bread. And uh, he lifted it up. He blessed it in the name of Jesus and broke it. He was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. His bread, the body was broken for our healing in the mighty name of Jesus. So as you partake of that bread, remember it was not broken in vain. Access was given unto you to all these promises when the side of Jesus was pierced. Access to all these promises were given unto you. Whatever you lay your hands upon to do is supposed to prosper. Now every place that the sole of your feet shall tread upon, that's doing that to you. Receive soundness of mind as they put a crown of thorns around his head. You received also the, the, the breaking of the curse of the Lord that said that when you till the ground, it will yield the thorns and thistles. It was a uh, and eating by the sweat of your brow, Jesus broke all those curses in the name of Jesus because it is written in Galatians chapter 3, verse 10. Curses is everyone who hangs on the tree so that the blessing of Abraham might come unto the Gentiles. Today, the blessing of Abraham is now yours. As you partake of that bread, do that in remembrance of what was done at Calvary in the name of Jesus. So partake of your bread. In the same manner as well, when... Uh, they have partaken of the bread. They also took the cup, the cup of the new covenant. Not just the covering, but now we are talking about the entire removal. So you are no longer a sinner. Uh, if you are still practicing sin, examine yourself whether you are God or you are the devil. Make, make a decision today. I want to be on God's side. I want to be. He who practices sin belongs to the devil. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. So make up your mind on whose side are you, on the Lord's side or on the enemy's side. And if it's on the Lord's side, then follow him in the name of Jesus. So as you partake of uh, this uh, blood, understand that this is a new covenant. It is not religion. It is a new covenant in the name of Jesus for the remission of the sin. So we are a new creation. All the things are passed away. Behold, all things are new and all things are ago. We are no longer sinners. We are the righteousness of God. 
in Christ Jesus. So as you partake of this, do this in remembrance of what was accomplished at Calvary in Jesus' name. So we are going to pray for the Holy Communion and for all the old that time in our life. The blood of Jesus is speaking better things. And we overcame Satan, the devil, and all those altars. They are offering human sacrifices, animal sacrifice. We have a better sacrifice. That's why I like Exodus chapter 12, because they literally ate a lamb roasted, an animal sacrifice, Christ Jesus. It was a prophetic action. We have a better sacrifice, Christ Jesus, a lamb without blemish. That all the other altars, they are going to be smashed into pieces in the name of Jesus. So, Father Jonathan is going to pray for us if he's there. Uh, Mama Agnes is going to pray for us. Uh, Sister um, Lynn uh, Jags is going to pray for us. Sister Lydia is going to pray for us. One after the other. Shall go. Jonathan's at work. I don't know if he's able to join us. Or okay. even able to pray. No, you pray because I saw the two of you. So the, uh, yeah, you, you pray, that's fine. Uh, I'm sorry, did you mean me? Yes. Okay, I thought you meant the other two people you'd named. Sorry. No, you pray, the two are one. So if he's not there, you are there. So. Indeed. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you have done through us, through Jesus. Father, we thank you that Jesus is the perfect Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. We thank you, Father, that, that Jesus laid down his life for us, <clears throat> that we might be in relationship with you. Lord, we can only come to you with thankful hearts. With humble hearts, Lord, because of the magnitude of what you have done for us. And Jesus, we thank you for, for being upon the cross, for staying there, and for doing this until everything was done. And we thank you that you laid down your life for us, that your sacrifice was greater than the sacrifice of bulls or rams or or lambs even lord that your sacrifice was once and for all one time for everyone that we could um come to you and have our sins forgiven have our hearts cleansed lord god we do thank you and jesus blood speaks better things than the blood of bulls and goats and jesus we ask you to forgive where we've gone astray, Father, where, we, where we've um, transgressed your laws, Lord, where we've sinned. Father, we ask that you forgive us as we come before you, Lord, so that we can have clean hands and a pure heart. And Lord, if we have anything against our brothers or sisters, then Father, we confess it now. And Lord, we put it down before we take communion. We thank you um, for Jesus' sacrifice for us. And we just, we just commit ourselves to you now, Lord. And as we take communion, Father, we are remembering him and everything that he has done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Everlasting Father, I am the I am King of Glory. We say thank you. Thank you for loving us unconditionally. Because of your love, you sent us your son Jesus Christ who died on the cross of Calvary for us. Thank you for the blood that will shed the cross of Calvary. Thank you, Jesus, before you go to your glory, 
you give us an example to partake of your body and the blood of, it, of yours. That every time we take it to remember, hallelujah, the death and the resurrection. Today, Father, in the name of Jesus, we have a partaken King of glory, the body and the, the blood of your Lord. So I pray in the name of Jesus that whoever have taken this blood and the blood of Christ, let this blood bring life into our mortal body in the name of Jesus. Let Because there is a life in the blood of Jesus. So let the blood of Jesus bring life in our brain. Let the blood of Jesus bring life in our heart. Let the blood of Jesus bring life if in our, our legs, in our liver, testing all the organs of our body, the mouth of Jesus, wherever there was a sickness, let it give it, hallelujah, peace in the mouth of Jesus. Let the blood of Jesus renew all the cells in our body, the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus will have a trick right now, Lord God Almighty, let it normalize the blood sugar in our system in the name of Jesus. Let this blood of Jesus open the artery, the vein was uh, uh, blocked by the cholesterol in the name of Jesus. Father, let the blood of Jesus have a trick, Lord, flush out any deadness in our system in the name of Jesus, and they bring a healing to everybody who have taken it in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we bless you, we glorify you for this new covenant in Jesus Christ. Thank you for new life. Thank you, King of Glory, for the peace. Thank you for the healing. Thank you for the joy. Thank you, King of Glory, for the strength you have given us for these three days all the God of glory of a prayer and fasting. Father, we continue in you. We continue in the prayer. We continue in fasting. So we pray that the blood of Jesus continue to strengthen us, continue to give us the power to pray, to fast in the name of Jesus. We bless you. We glorify your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for sending your son to this earth because you loved us so much and you want us to be with you, Lord. We thank you for this tremendous sacrifice he did on the whipping post and the cross and all that we've gained from it. He knew no sin, but he became sin for us, Lord. He had no sickness, but he took on sickness on himself, Lord. He gave us sound mind. He gave us everything that we put our hands to will prosper. He gave us every place that our foot shall tread. He's given to us. Oh, Lord, we just thank you and praise you that you've opened the veil of the temple and now we have access to you and we are now temples of the holy spirit of the god the father and god and jesus and we thank you lord for all that you've done but we need to be holy because without holiness no one shall see the lord so help us to <clears throat> never go back into sin never go off the narrow path and just follow you walk on the highway of holiness and attain everything that you've ordained us to attain lord oh, we thank you for your unadulterated sufferings on the cross lord for us because you loved us what an amazing god you are you truly are wonderful and we thank you for it we thank you lord by the straps of jesus we are healed, made whole and delivered. And the devil has nothing on us. Oh Lord, you truly are wonderful. You're such a wonderful, loving father, such a wonderful, loving Jesus, our brother and our friend. Oh Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit that brings us comfort, that brings us peace, that fills us with the joy of the Lord, which is our strength, and gives us the ability to go forth and do your will and keep your commandments. Lord, we just praise you and we just glorify you. And we thank you for all that you've done for us, for your great love for us. 
that we might be with you for eternity. Let us examine ourselves, Lord, daily. And just to see that we are not slipping off that path, Lord. We are still on the right road. And as we dwell in that secret place of the Most High, we shall abide under your shadow and nothing shall befall us. What an amazing God you are. We truly love you and we glorify your name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, O God. Father, we are in awe, O God. Thank you so much, God. Thank you that even now, Lord, that you have used this opportunity, O Jehovah, just like you did with Gideon, my father, that you say to Gideon, he is a mighty man of valor, O God, yet he saw himself as the least, O King of glory. O Father, thank you that you've reminded us that we are the righteousness of God, that we are no longer sinners, O God, that we are a new creation, O God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father. Father, we want to say thank you. We want to praise you, my God. And Father, how I pray, oh God, that just like Jesus said to his um, to the to the followers, my King, He said that if you follow me, drink my blood and eat my body. And Father, they took offense, oh God. But Lord, how I pray that in our relationship with you, you become flesh to us, oh God. That truly, Father, when we say man shall not live by bread alone, but by the word word that comes from the word of the mouth father let it not be just a statement oh god that truly my father we come and devour your word oh god that truly my father the feed in the spirit oh god will be a reality for us oh god that jehovah we will be aware of our being hungry for you oh king of glory Father, we want to say thank you. We want to praise you, my King, because today, Jehovah, not only do we end this fast, my King, as mighty men and women of valor, but I thank you, you have reminded us, oh Jehovah, righteousness was not based on what we did, but that which was imputed on us, oh King of glory. Father, I thank you, my God, because by the cross, oh Jehovah, God, hallelujah, Father, every single thing that the enemy has been raising up in the altars of our families. You are so worthy, my God. It is literally everything that Jesus died on the cross for, my God. That my Jehovah for the salvation of our families, my King, that was already provided on the cross. That God for the deliverance of every Lord, every possession, my God, be it witchcraft, be it um, alcoholism, be it sexual immolarity, Lord, and homophilia, Lord, whatever it is, my King, that comes under the category, Lord, of deliverance, that too it was done. But for whatever it is, oh, hallelujah, be it the sickness, my God, of autism, of um, Down syndrome, of mental health, oh God, every sickness, every single bit, every top, from the top of our head to the soles of our feet, there's not one disease, my King, that Jesus said it was too much for me, but each one was healed. Oh, Father, my King, for the stagnation, my God, for the devouring of our finances, my King, for the progression, oh Jehovah, God, the Lord, that do you provided, oh God, in the promise, oh Father God of prosperity. Truly, truly, my God, that the precious blood of Jesus, oh, it speaks better things than the blood of Abel. Father, I thank you, my Jehovah, because in the ending of this fast, my King, we have truly come to the point where it all began, oh God. It started with the cross, oh Jehovah, God, that truly the blood of Jesus sits on the mercy seat, oh God, that truly we are a new creation in you. And Father, just like Gideon, oh God, walked into what you had purposed him to be, oh God. And Father, he, oh God, 
um, became Lord, even a judge unto the nation of um, of um, of Israel, my God. I thank you, oh Father, that even now, my King, we have become the mighty men and the mighty women of valor, oh God. And Father, thank you that truly every single altar has been broken. Thank you that every single altar has been cast, oh God, has been split apart and the ashes have fallen to the ground. Oh, truly, all glory, all name, praise be upon thee. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. If Sammy can pray, and then William also will pray, and I will pray. So. Hey Lord, now as we come before your holy presence, we want to thank you, Father, for having covered what it is Christ Jesus did on the cross for us. Lord, we want to thank you, Father, for having granted us the revelation, Lord, that we are the righteousness of God in Christ, that truly all things have been fitted all things have been completely removed. It's not just the thoughts. It's not just the emotions, Father. It's not just the, any, any high thing that the enemy would try to exalt above the word of God. It is the actual nature. It is the actual nature, Father, that was completely removed. And now that all things that we do in your kingdom, it is a choice, Lord. We want to thank you, Almighty Father, because you said that you've given us, Father, that um, a sacrifice who is Christ Jesus, that it always was tempted, Lord. Um, yet without sin. So he is able to help those who are tempted, Lord, because um, he, we have overcome the world because greater is he who is in us than he that is in the world, who is Christ Jesus that dwells in our hearts. We're asking, Almighty Father, that through the power of your Holy Spirit, you begin to teach us how to use that unlimited power that is in Christ Jesus. We ask, Almighty Father, that you continue um, to wash our minds and to renew our minds by the washing of the word of God. And especially something very um, uh, specific that Pastor Jerry said was, we need to believe what um, 2 Corinthians 5 says, that we are the righteousness of God in Christ. So we pray, Almighty Father, that we don't just repeat these verses, Lord, but we truly believe that that is who we are. We ask that through your Holy Spirit, you begin to impress your nature and your character upon us, that we would think like you, we would see like you, that even the boldness that you've given our shepherd to say, devil, we don't even have time for you, that we would have that similar boldness because you say that a disciple is not above his master, but if he's properly trained, we will be just like them. And truly, our, our, our master has not held anything from us, Lord. So we're asking, Almighty Father, that you continue to embolden us and to empower us, to give us the will and the power to put all things that would oppose us under. And we ask, Almighty Father, that truly the scales would completely fall from our eyes and there will be no more veil that we would know who we are we would know who we are in Christ Jesus, that truly we are overcomers, Lord, and, and there is nothing else for Christ to do because all things were already accomplished on the cross of time. We ask, Almighty Father, that as we have been fasting and praying, dear Lord, that you help us to become the altar that will break every other altar. When you told Gideon to go ahead and build an altar for you, um, you told him to break down the altar of Baal and, and to completely... Um, dismantle everything and even the bulls that were supposed to be sacrificed there um, that they would be sacrificed to the yours instead so truly what you want us to do is you want us to break down every other degree of worship that we would have um, to any other deity and any other god who is not yourself and to set our own lives in order so that that even those works of the enemy would be destroyed by our altars, dear Lord. And we pray, Father, you continue to help us, that you continue to uphold us by your generous arm to stop us from falling, dear God, to stop us from slipping in our own ways, dear Father. We ask, Almighty Father, Lord, that all the fruits that are listed in, in Galatians 5, Father, 18, um, all the works of the flesh, Lord, that they truly be uprooted in our lives, Father. We plead the blood of Jesus upon our own hearts, Lord, um, that you would continue to cleanse our conscience from every dead work, um, that would affect uh, how efficient our altars are and how much spiritual power we are able to carry, dear Lord. And of course, Father, we pray like Pastor has uh, taught us many times, make us willing to be willing. Make us willing to move, Father, from um, sanctification to consecration, dear Lord. Make us willing to live that life, understanding that it is not a chore, understanding that it is not a hard thing to attain, but truly, it is the position we come to where we have all things that Christ made available for us. 
And we thank you, Father, for what you've told us today. And I pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, thanks for allowing us to examine ourselves before communion tonight. And it's not just a religious act. It's actually commemorating what you've done for our salvation, our redemption, our healing, our dignity. Lord, help us all, please, and myself included, obviously, to renew our minds by the washing of the water of the word of God. And as Patrick Jerry's rightly preached recently, I think maybe even tonight, you don't hear the prayer of sinners. Lord, help us seek first your kingdom and your righteousness. Help us to pursue peace with all people and holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. And Lord, that then there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Help us to do that daily. And as Pastor Jerry was sharing and preaching earlier, if we desire, because it says later in Corinthians that if someone's hungry, let them eat uh, the Lord's Supper at home. Perhaps that's a good uh, suggestion. We can, if we desire, do it daily, as I think Pastor Jerry shared about another preacher uh, doing that Wigglesworth for someone at some point. Lord, thanks for the 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 way you humble me on a daily basis, the, the involvement you have in my life. What is it that you're mindful of a person like me? But we're no sinners anymore. We're as Patrick Jerry's rightly said and preached, we're made righteous through the blood of Jesus. And that can only do that for any human being, no matter where we come from in the past. And we don't look at ourselves in the flesh anymore. For, as Patrick Jerry shared earlier, whatever we come from in the past, that is, behold, all things have gone. The new creation is here. Lord, help us to walk humbly in obedience to you as humble servants. There's no higher calling for any human being than to be able to serve God, the living God. That indeed is an honour and a privilege, and let us take that uh, as seriously as it needs to be taken, because uh, how can we repay you just for the things that you do in our lives on a daily basis and for the Christ and us, the hope of glory when we pass for this uh, body. But Lord, Again, we're no meant to just be Sunday Christians. We, we are to be so much more than that, but to have integrity in our witness. And that means, I think Pastor Jerry was talking about anger earlier, and we shouldn't let the sun go down in our anger. Lord, please, you help me with that little uh, trait, which isn't a good one. I'm not asking for grace to go on sinning, indeed not, but grace to work out the things that displease you, Lord. And again, you don't hear the, the prayer of sinners, but Lord, it's upon us to to be part of the, the Great Commission and the fivefold ministry to help set the captives free. There's so many people that we know personally and in the world that need your love and your compassion and your transformative, redemptive power and for the fear of death to be taken away from people, Lord. Because again, Christ, Christ in new creations, Christ in people, the hope of glory. Lord, help us to have integrity. Help us to be the mighty men and women of valour that we are because we are saints and when we're born again, we're saints and we're a, a royal priesthood and, and we're, you're the firstborn Lord of many brethren. And we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God. And you say in the book of John, Lord, that if we love you, we'll keep your word. Help us to do that daily and examine ourselves daily. I pray that, Lord, we love and thanksgiving for what you do in our lives daily. In Jesus' name, life's a gift, Lord. Thank you. Amen. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. We want to give you all the glory for every one of us. I truly say thank you for the patience that you've given unto us, the endurance that you've given unto us, and the fact that we've been able to examine our own work, whether we are still in the faith or not. I pray that you would encourage us, you would strengthen us, and the enemy will no longer eat our lunch in the name of Jesus. We will never allow him to sit at our dining table anymore. He's no longer welcome in our uh, dine, on our dining table in the mighty name of Jesus. And I rebuke every power of the devil that has been whispering into our ears that as God truly say, uh, as God truly said that you are a new creation, that's what he said to you, as God really said, look at you and bring in all the condemnations as God really said, yes, God has already said that I'm a new creation, all things are passed away, behold, all things in me are of God, I'm no longer a senior, I'm a sinner, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, and I believe it, I take it home in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray against any spirit of low self-esteem. I break it in the name of Jesus. You have not given us any spirit of timidity. You never make any worm, Father. 
we are your creation, your own image after your own likeness in the mighty name of God. We are not any worm at all. Christ was the worm that was crushed, not us. That's made us more than a conqueror. In business, Father, we are more than a conqueror. Any altars that have been speaking against us, that we will not prosper in business, I smash those altars in the name of Jesus. The Father, as we've submitted to you, you, Lord Jesus, to go before us and break all the gates of bronze, cut the, bar, the bars of iron and open a double door for businesses in the name of Jesus. You said that you are going to surprise us this week, Father, surprise us. Many as have partaken of this holy communion, as many as have partaken also of this uh, uh, fasting and prayer time, Lord Jesus, that you are not a man's debtor, nor a woman's debtor. Father, visit them and surprise each one of us this week in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us come with a testimony of your goodness here in the land of the living. Father, we thank you. Stretch forth your hand against all those family altars. From this day forward, visit those family altars in the name of Jesus. Let your hammer come down from heaven and smash all those family altars in the name of Jesus, that they will never be erected again in the mighty name of Jesus. Every tree that my father did not plant up or root it up, the tree of autism, of Down syndrome, of muteness, of celibacy, of premature death, of a single motherhood, a single parenthood, of root, of barrenness, of root, those who trace in our family, of mental illness, of drug addiction, of root, all those trees in the name of Jesus. In the life of those 10 people that are on our list, of root, every tree that you did not plant, and every altar that have been speaking against us as the blood of Jesus is speaking better things. So, so those that are offering sacrifices and ministering on those altars, they shall eat their own flesh and they shall be drunk with their own blood. The bones shall be burnt on those altars in the mighty name of Jesus. Send your angel of death to visit the camp of the enemy, those who are oppressing us. And you say, let my people go in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, as we turn, turn left, subdue our enemies. As we turn left, uh, right, subdue all of our enemies. Give us peace around about. After subduing all of our enemies, we shall see them no more. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. May God bless you and keep you.